The images of victims of the August 21st attack in Damascus are amongst the most haunting the world is ever likely to see. Each side of the civil war in Syria blames the other. Number three. Samples gathered by the inspection team that visited the site are being subjected to forensic examination under the oversight of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons here in The Hague. Six, nine, zero. Yes. The UN report on what their team found could come before the end of the week. In the meantime, the proposal that Syria place its chemical weapons under international control may fall to this same inspection body, already operating under intense pressure. The proposal raises numerous questions, not least about the practical risks of any such process, and who would carry out this task of finding, securing, and dismantling any chemical weapons in a country where a civil war still rages. Is this a wild card, or is it, is it a game changer? So the question is, how many countries would be prepared to send substantial numbers of personnel, probably mostly military, on the understanding that they would in turn be guarded effectively by the UN in an unpredictable and violent uh, environment. And that is hard to judge. Uh, maybe there'll be a kind of um, crowd contagion effect when more countries put their hands up to do it. Geneva is where the world first tried to put serious limits on the use of chemical weapons with the Geneva Protocol of 1925, following the use of chemical agents such as mustard gas in the First World War. The Chemical Weapons Convention of 1993 went further, banning their production too. Syria is not a signatory, but tonight said it may now be prepared to sign up. One scientist here in Geneva with 30 years experience of international controls on chemical weapons told us he thinks the safest way to dismantle Syria's weapons is by putting people physically on the ground. But given it's such early days in this latest round of diplomacy, and it could yet fail, doing it militarily is still possible, though messy because of the risk of spreading chemicals downwind. In bunker storage, it probably is uh, uh, the use of precision munitions uh, and the creation of very high temperatures on the inside of these bunkers. And the question is whether you can actually achieve that. Uh, that means you, you shoot a hole into the bunker structure from the top and then you fire in with a second weapon that then creates effectively a fireball on the inside and you hope that the, the temperature is, is intense enough to, uh, to incinerate everything that's inside. If it's on the outside, I honestly have doubts whether you can do it in a safe way. He told us there may well be clues buried in the inspector's report about who was responsible for the recent attacks on civilians, though from what he's seen published so far, he's still puzzled. The clue for me in terms of who fired is, is really the amount. Uh, and, and the amount here is, is significant because it's that whole thing on the outside was all filled up with agent. Calculations have shown that that could be, all, it could be up to 50 litres of agent. And to make 50 liters of chemical agent uh, is, is not easy to do. That's a semi-industrial or industrial process. Now, to me, this looks like uh, an existing delivery system has been adapted to fire a, a chemical payload. It doesn't look to me like uh, the sort of, of thing I would expect in a standard chemical weapons uh, stockpile uh, of an so army. Again, does that lead you to come down towards one side or another? I'm still on the fence. I'm really still on the fence on this one. Uh, because we are in a situation where, where even parts of the opposition will be able to get their hands on on, on agent uh, if they know where it is. Whilst diplomatic efforts to avoid military action proceed, the details from the inspector's samples are still crucial in managing stockpiles and holding to account those responsible for attacks. Once the samples from Syria arrive with the Organisation for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons here in The Hague, they were split up and sent to several individual laboratories, the start of a painstaking and secretive process to identify the chemical signature or fingerprint of any chemicals they might contain. And is the plan to rid Syria of chemical weapons for the future realistic? It's practical if the world wants it to work, but it's dangerous and difficult. You could get people out fairly fast if the, if the mandate and political will were found, but the actual destruction of the chemicals wouldn't be impossible, but it would take months, I suspect. And that's if you could agree that you got them all. Uh, there might be disputes over, over the validity of, of any declaration, which could, could bog the whole thing down. 
If Syria really is prepared, as it has said tonight, to tell the world where its chemical weapons are and stop making them, the experts we've spoken to say the chance to put them beyond use is an opportunity. But for it to work, dialogue on all sides must be sincere.